Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Haggard. This is Global Wrestling News, big news from around the world. We start with Mark Hall. For the third time in four years, he's a world champ. The Penn State sophomore cruised through the first session with victories over a cadet silver medalist from Russia and an Asian champion from Iran. Hall hit a front headlock roll through and then pinned Uzbekistan's Isa Shapiev in the first minute of the 74 kilo finals. How are you able to stay so calm in so many different positions? It looks like you're rattleproof. Yeah, uh, I'd just say it's like experience. I wrestle with a lot of people. Like just doing stuff like this, like a lot of different countries, so they're going to do uh, things that aren't so traditional, I'd, I'd say, um, in the United States, but just being able to uh, get that experience. Um, there's not a lot of places I haven't been, so uh, you know whether that comes, that type of move comes in the first 30 seconds or like the last 30 seconds, it's just like knowing if it's there, I can hit it, and I'm strong there, and uh, again, it just goes back to the experience. I mean, Mark Hall is a great collegiate wrestler, obviously, but how is he able to dominate internationally? Well, this is uh, Mark Hall is a talent that's been around for a long time in the freestyle ranks. He's a guy that went to the OTC when he was very, very young. So, you know, his family, coaches have known that he's really been a freak talent, and they, they've pushed him towards this freestyle side of things. So, I mean, this is... This is what the future of USA Wrestling is looking like. Got to take the guys over and do the international competition so they can get this feel. Great collegiate wrestler, but definitely going to be a better freestyle wrestler. Minnesota's Mitchell McKee reached the gold medal round at 60 kilos, but came up a little short against Russia's Abdullah Akhmadov. The European bronze medalist ran out to an eight-point lead and then picked up the fall, so McKee would have to settle for silver. I wanted to go and get gold and you know, didn't get that. Um, that's disappointing, but I guess if you look at the day as a whole, it was a good day. Um, just not the ending I kind of wanted to the day, but still a good day overall. Talk about what you learned at this tournament. Um, I learned that, you know, no matter how bad it gets in a match, you can always, always fight your way back, always, um, if you keep battling. Um, you know, obviously, unless you get down too many like I did in the finals, but, um, you know, I just learned, you know, the, a little bit about myself, too, that uh, I can battle back from quite, you know, a lot of adversity and, and just, you know, right in the match, so um, I guess I learned that, and I also learned there's, you know, still a lot of stuff I need to um, improve on, a lot of stuff I need to fix, and, and you know, that's what I'll end up doing. This was a tough one to watch. He got taken down, and you really kind of knew that it was going to be over. The Russians are so great with that leg lace. The transitions are very well. So from right off the bat, I really kind of thought that this match was over. He's a little undersized against this guy as well. So um, I think getting him back in, in the weight room a little bit, you know, getting more of this competition overseas, this is going to be a gold medal uh, guy that's going to be in contention in the future. Team USA's third medal of the day came from Ohio State wrestler Colin Moore. The Buckeye sophomore beat Germany's Ilja Matten by Tech Fall in the bronze medal match at 96. You go from not meddling last year to getting on the podium this year. What does that say about this past year for you? Um, I still think it started last summer before my first junior worlds. Um, that summer just got me a lot better for NCAAs, and then the NCAA season got me a lot better for this, so hopefully we keep it going, and uh, I do better at NCAA, so I'm, uh, I'm excited. Coaches here are awesome. Coaches at Ohio State are awesome. I've just been super blessed to be around awesome wrestlers and just great people, so. Ohio State just has to have something going on in their room. I mean, the, I don't know what it is though. Yeah, they're producing great freestyle wrestlers. Just a guy that you know didn't uh, didn't come home with a medal last year. You know, he's got the the development. These coaches that are there. This is somebody that just continues to to rise and kind of shock. I mean, he's kind of a sleeper, and no one really knew who he was until last year. Now they now they know he's got a, he's got a medal for it. Last few days watching track wrestling. Makes us appreciate those guys out of Wisconsin. Thanks, Trap. We've got a lot more from the Junior World Championships. We'll take you through day two right after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to Pure and Clean Sports.
This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made from scratch two topping pizza for only $12. For easy quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too. Dayton Fix and Gable Stevenson captured world championships on Wednesday night, helping the U.S. edge Russia for its very first junior world team title since 1984. Fix kicked things off against Russian Ismail Gatsia. The Oklahoma State freshman scored two on a duck under and then went to his gut wrench to go up 6-1 at the break. No more of the same in the second as Fix hit three takedowns to win his first world title by Tech Fall 12-1. When you envision days like this, is, is that about the way it goes? I mean, 50, I mean I think yeah, 54 that's, to one or something like that. Yeah, that, that that moment. I've I've jumped to that moment. I don't know. I couldn't name the time, number of times I've jumped to that moment, and just to accomplish that, it's really it's amazing. Uh, just talk about what that finals match was like and what was going through your head the whole time. Yeah, I mean, I just I wanted to get on top and get get all the turns, and he was he was doing a good job of, of finding my hands, and he slowed me down. I got yeah, I got one turn, but. I and mean, I just stuck to my offense and just got the job done. Take a look at this kid's tournament, Tony. Five tech falls, scored 51 points without surrendering a single takedown. Outside of Spencer Lee, Dayton Fix has really been the, probably the, the highest recruit that we've had since Mark Hall. So the last couple of years is kind of just transitioning transitioning here of uh, our, our huge athletes that we have. So Dayton Fix is a huge get for Oklahoma State. What makes him you know so great, he's great on his feet, but when he gets on top, that's when those transitions happen. His gut wrench is really good. Obviously, he's scoring points in the, in the metal bout. But getting there, he gets on top and he leg laces people. He guts them and he gets he can he just has so many options from top. So you saw what he can do internationally. How do you see him transitioning into collegiate wrestling? Do you think he's a guaranteed lock on an NCAA title? Uh, without a doubt. It'd be interesting to see how they handle him his freshman year. You know, um, weight wise, he's cutting a lot of weight right now. So I think they're going to try to hopefully beef him up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so 25, 33 pounder, not for sure where he's going to land. But either way, he's going to be. I mean, he's dominating people on the folk style side of things too so huge get number one ranked recruit probably multi-generational athlete too grew up in a wrestling family wrestling coaches and he's a legacy at oklahoma state so it's pretty cool all right future minnesota gopher gable stevenson ran out to an early three-point lead against iranian heavyweight naim hasadada stevenson struck early in the second hitting a takedown on the edge of the mat to go up 5-1 while the iranian picked up his first and only points on a step up but it was not enough and stevenson the young man from minnesota walked away with his third world title I worked real hard for this, so it means a lot. And I'm just happy I can come out here and win a team title with my team, too, and win individual by myself. Yeah, was there any pressure on you going out there knowing that if you won, then the team title would be USA's? No, I, I knew I was, I had a feeling I was going to come out there and win. Like, I, I don't ever think I'm going to lose. It's high confidence here, and I just want to go out there and win and get my team. First, like, was it first from 19, I don't know, but 1984, still. Yeah. yeah, 1984, but we won it, we got it. Just talk about this team overall. You guys come over with seven medals. That's insane. Yeah. Well, we had a tough squad. Um, everybody wrestled good. Everybody wrestled well. Everybody pitched in to be world champs. And just, it was real fun being here with them. I don't think either of us are really too surprised here, Tony. There were some rumors that Gable was pushing Kyle Snyder around in practice. I mean, that's if he's doing that, I mean, he's right where he needs to be. I, mean, I think that's just the next step. I mean, he's a, he's a big guy, I mean, but Kyle Snyder's on, a, on I think, on a whole nother level. So, um, you know, transitioning, you know, he's got one more year, year left as a junior. He could step up to the seniors. 
But I mean, the, the opportunity to win two cadets, two juniors, I feel like you know he's got to, he's got to step up in that role, and he could be go down as one of the greatest high school wrestlers of all time. All right, let's go to the 66 kilo finals. It was American Ryan Deacon against Russian cadet world champ David Baev. Deacon won two of his first three bouts with ease, but Baev took the bout by tech fall in the very first. Talk about that finals match that you had and what you learned from it. Um, I think just learning to, I need to work on some parterre stuff and wrestling. Uh, those foreign guys are just different feel and uh, being more patient. Ryan, you finished fifth in Fargo about a year ago, and then you didn't place at Eastern Michigan Open. Can you explain what's happened here in the last eight or nine months that's put you in the position to be where you are now? Um, I think just being around a great program and having great uh, coaching staff, great training partners, and just everybody's helping out a bunch and helping me elevate my game. I mean, Deacon was kind of a sleeper on this team. I know he came up short, but very impressive performance overall. Yeah, this is a kid that has, hasn't wrestled internationally, so I'd say this is pretty dang impressive. I mean, he barely made the stand at Fargo, so we all know how tough that is. Obviously, you know, he's come a long ways. I think Andrew Howe at Northwestern and the other coaches that have come in here recently really have given him the confidence and, you know, pushing him to, to go towards this international freestyle side of things. I wouldn't mind having Andrew Howe in my corner as a coach, i got to tell you. All right, three-time world team member Zahid Valencia captured what was uh, an elusive world medal on Wednesday. The Sun Devil sophomore faced Russian Artur Nafanov in the 84-kilo finals and was down 3-1 early, but a four-point move with 30 seconds left in the first, well, made it a 4-3 score for Valencia. The California native continued to battle, but an additional Russian takedown and step out was enough for Nafiev to take the crown. Talk about your finals match. Um, it was a tough one. He was strong. He was big. A um, couple calls went his way, but um, he, got, he got the W this time. You managed to stay in it, even though, like you said, there were some calls that went the other way. Uh, how were you able to kind of stay level-headed and keep pushing through? I kept trying to just put pressure, kept trying to get to my attacks, but he was good at defending uh, all my shots and stuff. But uh, I kept it close, uh, being able to try to try to finish it at the end, but it just didn't happen at the time. I think the difference for this year for Valencia has really had a lot more confidence on the mat. If you go back and watch his matches, just stepping up on there, he felt like he belonged. Last year, he kind of was in the shadows and a little just a little tentative, but now, you know, the a college season under his belt has a lot more confidence and, you know, he came away with a bronze medal and I think I think he should have been gold medal. Uh, got a gold, not the gold medal, got the silver medal. I feel like, you know, there's kind of the officiating was a little sketchy, I guess, but you got to go back and look at it. But, <laughs> I mean, I think Valencia is right there, definitely has time to pick up more world medals. You know, I, I hear so many people complain about officiating when our guy loses. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right, we invite you to check out all the archive matches and the live stream from Tempere, Finland at trackwrestle.com. I want to thank those guys from top to bottom. You're the best. We'll be right back. You're watching GWN. Thanks to Adidas Wrestling. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these 
throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out. Pureandcleansports.com. It's really a tale of two cities. Kevin Jackson went from jobless to coaching one of the best American performances in history at the Junior Worlds. Track Wrestling's Andy Hamilton caught up with Coach KJ to talk about the U.S. performance in Finland. What has the last couple days been like from your, your standpoint? It's been intense. You know, it's been a lot of fun um, just to watch guys go out there and, and compete, you know, compete to their true potential, compete with, um, you know, with everything they have um, to accomplish goals that they set for themselves. Uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, and these guys deserve it. They're the best team in the world, and they deserve it. I don't think it's probably hyperbole to say uh, this morning, and, and you could probably even stretch it into, you know, tonight, one of the best days in American wrestling history. For sure. I would like, like to not um, take to that heavyweight match. You know, we built up some drama um, rolling to that heavyweight match. But, um, yeah, it was exciting. I mean, to have four guys in the finals, uh, to go 14 and 0 on the day coming into the finals, um, I can't remember a day like that. And I've been around for a long time. I've been on some really good teams, senior level uh, teams that, uh, that won a lot. Um, but this team is special. I mean, there's some special guys. There's some, there's some leaders, you know, between Fix and, uh, and Hall. Um, they led this team. Uh, Gable is a quiet leader. Uh, so these guys really wrestle for each other, and they wrestle for themselves, and they wrestle for Team USA. You're a guy that has intimate knowledge of, of the inner workings of USA Wrestling and the whole system. In your opinion, wh where were the seeds planted for, for what's going on in the age? level well you know I, right now well i i just think you know when brandon slay came in and, and he started working with that development team him and bill zadick you know and and i even, even doc bennett you know he told me a long time ago that there were a group of kids coming that um that are going to be really good and i think it's i think it's i think it's these kids and um um but these kids are are special they've been wrestling for a long time um i'm not sure i think the seeds were planted way even before they got on the national scene um with their parents and you know, their club coaches and their, their junior high coaches, kids coaches, you know. So it, it took a lot of people to help these guys get to where they're at right now. And, and, and they can only get better. I mean, they're junior world champions, but uh, there's a lot of room for growth from all of these kids. Dayton fixed 53 to 1 today. Unbelievable. I mean, you know, him and Mark Hall, they really led the way. You know, Mark uh, probably didn't score as many points as, as, as Dayton, but he dominated the tournament. You know, he pinned in the finals. Um, fix is special. Um, I think last year really motivated him. Not winning the world championship last year uh, drove him to, to do what he did in this tournament. No one trains harder than Dayton. I mean, there's guys probably that train um, as hard, but no one trains harder. And to see his commitment to the game, um, especially in, in, you know, at such a young age to see the commitment of these young men um, at such a level makes him special. And so, um, so I was really, really happy and excited to be able to work with these guys. It was, it was, it was truly a privilege and a blessing to spend some time with these what, guys. Um, what makes Fix such a monster on top? Well, he has a go-to turn. I mean, he has a go-to turn that has a second and a third option. Um, when he goes for that trapped arm, he, go, he, he can bar it, he can trap it. If that guy turns that hip down, he can gut the other way. And so, um, so he has that go-to turn. He's got three options coming off that action. And so that makes him, such a, that makes him a monster on top. And he's a, he's a big, strong 55-kilo kid. And, um, and I don't think too many guys can stay with him. He's going he's gonna to be a monster on the collegiate circuit. He's going to be a monster at the senior circuit. So um, uh, he has a great future. Gable, youngest guy in this tournament, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and rolls through it. I mean, yeah. I think 61 to 11 or something like that. I've been saying it for a couple of years. Um, this kid's special. I asked him when the last time he lost, and he said never. And I, I, I'm, I'm, ten, I'm kind of believing that, that that's the fact. Um, but um, it's unbelievable the athletic skill uh, that this kid has. And, and not only that, he's, um, he's a student of the game. Yeah, and he has a technical skill to go along with his athletic ability. And he works hard. He trains hard. Um, 
you know, he's he's the future. He's definitely the future. I don't know when that future is gonna gonna hit on the senior level, but it's coming, and it's coming pretty soon because um, this kid can flat out wrestle. I think he was a, a little conservative in that final match, trying to bring home that team title, and um, and he dominated. He did dominate the tournament, um, and he could have been a cadet this year. So that's that's pretty that's pretty special. I mean, Tony, we've talked about this being a great fit for Kevin on this staff, and I, I think we just saw it evidenced in spades. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to say you know, really what kind of an impact he's had so far. I mean, he's only been there, he thinks, less than two months, less than 60 days, but watching him, how he was interacting with the athletes on the mat, you know, he's already kind of in, changed his focus, so, you know, Team USA, and he's all, he has always done that. He's been on multiple teams uh, for Team USA. I just feel like this is a good fit for him. Um, he's got, a, you know, more people supporting him than really kind of being on his own um, and, and leading a team, so he's got a good team right behind him with USA Wrestling. I have to imagine this is just what KJ needed after his time at Iowa State. We wish him the best of luck, and thanks, KJ. After the break, we'll hear from one of the best coaches that's been at the forefront of USA's progression at the junior level. You're watching Global Wrestling News, powered by our friends at Fairway Food Stores. The war raged for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Welcome back. The rise of USA Wrestling's developmental system is something that has been in the works for over eight years now. The results aren't something that happen overnight or in a vacuum. USA Wrestling is finally seeing the benefits of their hard work and commitment to developing our young athletes. One man that has been through it, Arizona State's head coach, Zeke Jones. Track Wrestling caught up with the coach shortly after claiming their first junior world championship since 1984. I'll tell you, I really believe the reason why you have this kind of experience and the types of medals and ultimately champions is we made a considerable investment over the last, I'd call it, you know, nine years where we started to pump dollars. It's really not teaching the double leg as much as giving these kids the opportunity and resource Resources to one, go to the Olympic Training Center, two, be around the best programs in the country where you're mixing cadets, juniors, universities, and senior athletes together, those that are young enough, that are emotionally and physically mature enough. Mark Hall, we were bringing him to the training center when he was 13 years old. We moved Kyle Schneider to the Olympic Training Center when he was a junior in high school. It was those types of things that we were doing, and it really wasn't that you were teaching him, you were just get putting him in the environment. Where'd that all come from? Where'd those ideas come from? Uh, I just think it was good leadership. You know, I, I think, um, you know, looking through all those years where, you know, I got to USA Wrestling in 09, so I think of it from my experience. And my experience was when we brought the brightest minds together in Leadership Summit fashion that we found that we needed to invest in our younger groups. That's what the Russians were doing. When we started to think about Satyev winning a gold medal at 19, we said, we have to do that. So I think what we started to do is grab and identify the Aaron Picos 
and marks and said, hey, let's get them in the environment now. I also think RTCs are a big factor. Look at Dayton Fix. Look at um, uh, Gable Stevenson. I don't think those things don't happen unless you put those really good young cadet and juniors in a university and senior freestyle atmosphere. That's where you get medals. It's the smart thing to do for the U.S. Tony, what are your thoughts on Zeke's comments? Well, you know, we don't, we don't get to see these decisions behind closed doors. Or, you know, how you know putting money into Mark Hall and Gable Stevenson, Dayton Fix, bringing them in. I mean, this is this concept of you know copying, I guess, overseas. That's something that we all think. Well, well, if they're doing it right, why don't we do it right? And I think finally we kind of have gotten out of this idea that we can just change it and make it our own, make it our own. Well, it's it's adapting to where we can take what they're doing and make it better. We have way better resources over here in my opinion, so I think it's just a, a Slay laying the, the groundwork for us. So bringing Kevin Jackson in there and learning from what Slay did, you know, I think uh, that commitment for for fans, seeing what they did on the junior level, really gives Americans a better uh, feel for what USA Wrestling is doing. A lot of progress, that's for sure. And I think it's really neat to see USA Wrestling putting money into the youth by bringing guys like Mark Hall to train with the best. Makes me wonder who else they brought in that we don't know about. Yeah, I mean, obviously the ones that he mentioned, you know, Gable Stevens and those guys, I mean, the, we don't know. We, you know, we haven't seen uh, their... Slay used to tweet a bunch of stuff with Mark Hall working out, so I'd be very curious to see who these junior high guys that maybe they've been bringing in to uh, be, you know, be the next Gable Stevens, being the next Dayton Fix, be the next Mark Hall. That's pretty exciting. I like the first class of the the five to seven year olds that are starting up at the Olympic Training Center. I'm joking. Hey, we're out of time for the week. Tune in to Takedown TV next week for complete coverage from women's and Greco-Roman action from Finland. For everybody at the Takedown Studios, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next. Next week for Global Wrestling News.